everyone for trichomes.com. I'm Ashley Manning, and this is Careers in Cannabis. On this show, we sit down with staffing agencies, cannabis companies, and other industry professionals to discuss employment opportunities in the burgeoning cannabis industry. New York became the 15th state to legalize cannabis in March of 2021, and many entrepreneurs are flocking there because of the market's potential to be worth billions once fully established. Today's guest was born and raised in New York and uniquely latched on to one of those opportunities to have a career in cannabis by combining her skill sets as an artist with her passion for cannabis. On this episode, we talk with Sabrina Palacio, founder of the small woman-owned business A1 Art Studio, located in Brooklyn, New York. Sabrina hosts private 420 friendly events and public art classes. They do acrylics paintings, art shows, and paint and sips. Hey, Sabrina, welcome to the show. Hello, thank you for having me. It's good to have you here. I know it's it's been a few months since we originally talked about having you on the show. And uh, just a few months prior to that, which was March of 2021, New York, where you reside, legalized cannabis. So that's where I'd love to start this conversation is knowing, did you start your career in cannabis when New York legalized or did your career in cannabis maybe start a lot, a lot sooner than March of 2021? Um, actually my career in cannabis, my career was not in cannabis. My life was in cannabis and then my career was on the side. And, um, it started before that I started painting in about 2016, um, started doing like custom work and custom clothes and shirts and canvases and everything. Um, but coming to the legalization, everything kind of just fell into place. I was doing my paint and tips at people's houses. And then when the legalization happened, I coincidentally just got this art studio. So I was like, what's better than painting, painting and smoking? So <laughs> it kind of just went hand in hand, you know? So you didn't really, ha- it was just a coincidence. You had no plans for yeah. your studio to be a cannabis friendly art studio. It just coincided together. Yeah, I, I didn't anticipate for the law to change. I, I don't follow the laws or the news or anything like that. Honestly, I, I try to stay away from those things because I feel like it's really toxic on the brain. So I coincidentally just got my art studio because I wanted to pursue my paint and sip passion and all my art passion. And when the law changed, I was like, this is great. I can do it without getting in trouble because I was probably going to do it before that anyway. So I got like a freebie get out of jail card. So that was great the way that everything lines up. Oh, that's awesome. That I mean, I know in New York, you can walk down the street smoking cannabis. Is that correct? Um, I Yes, it is correct. Honestly, I was doing it before the law changed, which... I don't recommend anybody to break the law, but I was doing it. So when the law changed, it didn't change my my everyday life. I kind of was just kept going the same way. But for my business, it changed my business's life because now I can promote it at freely and not have to worry about get coming and getting raided or some crazy things, you know, like the cops that they do that. So I I got really lucky and I'm so blessed that this happened because Smoking weed is so, um, what do I say? It's so relevant in the art world, you know? And a lot of people try not to talk about it because of the societies that they might've grown up in and the way that they, their households perceive it or people around them, like their teachers or whatever the case, their higher ups uh, uh, perceive it. So being that now I can do it freely and promote it freely is great because now I have a lot more clients that want to come here because nobody else is doing this, you know? So it's really yeah. about it, So were you incorporating cannabis into your art prior to the studio? And it- yeah. So I, one, I usually smoke before I'm painting a piece or creating a piece. Um, and then I also was doing uh, art shows. So at my art shows, they, depending on the location that I would have, but I've had about 10 art shows and something like that. Um, A lot of the locations did allow smoking weed inside. So my business kind of did chime in with the weed. Now that I think about it, people were always smoking around my art. But now that it's legalized, I can just promote it freely before I couldn't say like, hey, come to my art show and you could just smoke. You know, it was kind of like, oh, you got there and it's like, surprise. So now it's like 
so beneficial to me and my business. Let's talk about how cannabis is plays a role in your art. I'd love to know how does that add to your creativity? I don't want to speak for you. Um, so I think it definitely adds to my creativity. Sometimes I almost feel um, insecure and unable or unwilling or undeserving to be able to create a crazy piece that I have or something that I'm going to pick, create in the future. But when I smoke, I genuinely feel more creative and more free and more like my spirit is uplifted and just euphoric and all those things really chime into my pieces because then I'm I'm able to get a little bit more creative and outside of my comfort zone or outside of what is the norm and art or whatever the case may be, you know? And that's why I really do, not that that's the only reason I smoke, but that is a reason why I do smoke before I'm painting because it brings out different levels, I think, not saying that I don't have those levels without smoking, because then there goes into like the argument of like addictive, yeah. not addictive, but I definitely do think it helps me create more outside of my everyday. When you come to my art studio one day and you see my pieces, you will see maybe some references of weed, like in the piece that I have behind me, um, the girl has an easel and a canvas and right below it is a raw rolling tray with some weed on it. So you That's will dope. Feel hints in my pieces. I try not to put them in every piece, but because I do like people to connect to it on a different level, like some people don't smoke and they want to connect to my piece and they might feel like they can't with weed, which, you know, so I try to give a variety. There's a lot of pieces without weed references, but there are a lot of pieces with weed references weed references so gotcha are you do you know i'm curious i would want to know i would want to talk to the people in my paint and sip class beforehand see the creative side of them then let everybody relax smoke a little bit and then talk to them do you notice that there's a total different vibe at before and after they've smoked and with their artwork particularly yes the what i was saying before about my confidence i see that in my students all the time almost every class i tell people when they get here all you need is the supplies in front of you and confidence. And if you don't have it, let's smoke a little. Maybe you might get it, you know? So <laughs> I definitely feel like in the beginning of the class, people come in really timid and shy, and then they see everybody smoking, and they start smoking, and they get really comfortable. And then a lot of uh, my students, they do their own thing. So, like, they'll come here, and they will not follow the class, which I 100% support. I tell them, like, if you feel inspired in this room, do whatever you want to do. If you want a color that you don't have, I will bring it to you or my assistant will bring it to you and you can do whatever you want. Just get inspired. I want people to come here and just feel free with their creativity, you know, because I feel like everybody is an artist and a lot of people don't uh, know that or channel that. And being here, I feel a lot of people chime into that a little bit more when they don't feel like they can outside, you know? Make makes sense is it, do you see um anybody who's come to your class who wasn't a cannabis consumer and then now they're around it and they're like wow this is something maybe i should try have you seen that shift i have seen students come here and only like drink and be like you know kind of on the ooh everybody's smoking but honestly, <laughs> i don't know if they're taking that home with them but i hope they are because I feel like there's a lot of people out there that should be smoking for their own well-being, for their own sanity, and what, to cope with every everyday life in New York, especially, um, that don't get that because of the ignorance that's around them. You know, uh, marijuana, a lot of to do with marijuana is education, and a lot of the negative so side of it comes from the misinformed education, you know, uneducated people talking about this plant thinking it's the worst of the worst, you know? And then they don't even get to choose that. I was actually talking about, I don't want to talk about the Olympics too much, but I was talking about how if she was maybe prescribed the marijuana, there would be a whole different conversation because I have a medical marijuana license and that makes me feel like, who's to say I can't join the Olympics? Because I have something maybe like PTSD or, or a body, like I'm in pain or something and I can't do that, you know? just just makes no sense and it all stems from uneducated people in the percent you know. and your your 
educating them also through art by having those little pieces of cannabis in in your artwork as well so i see your space as not only art but an educational space for people to gather community that's what cannabis really has always been about since the beginning of history people used it in in ceremonies and gatherings and that's in the industry is also built on that when you're considering a career in cannabis culture and community is super super important so thank you for touching on those points. Uh, let's talk about your studio now. So where are you? Lo- what's the name of your studio? Where are you located? Let's get into A1 Art. So my studio is the A1 Art Studio. It is located in East Williamsburg, Brooklyn, New York. Um, I am Brooklyn. really... Yes, Brooklyn. <laughs> I'm actually from Queens. So when I got my studio oh, here, yeah. I was like, now I'm saying that I'm from Brooklyn because... You know, <laughs> little edge to that people say I'm from Brooklyn and they're automatically cool so I'm from Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah, I got my studio in February of 2021 I got it with you know the COVID discount a little bit the rent was higher than my budget but I got to talk them down because they didn't have anybody renting it out you know they need the money so it kind of helped me and helped them together and it created an amazing space and I love it that's the queen's hustler in you Yes. <laughs> but I have a piece actually that literally says in huge letters, Queens gets the money. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. So you're renting a studio space. Um, any com- So how big is the studio space? All I see is, you know, people hot boxing in a room or something. And so yeah. how is that going? Okay, so I'm going to be honest, it's bad. <laughs> it is really, really smoky in here. I feel like I have. Like, I was having a problem getting an air conditioner in here because of there's BTU and all this stuff, whatever. But I thought I had a big space until I added, like, 10 blunts to the mix. It's crazy. It's crazy. But, you know, I try to keep the window open when it's not 100 degrees in New York. And I keep the AC on and the fan on. And I'm just praying every day to the weed gods. that. <laughs> gonna not get me in trouble but yeah it's all any issues with neighbors complaining about the smoke or anything so luckily not yet no i have been here for about three or four months and nobody has complained yet which i am so grateful for but i have an advantage it is not a residential building it's a commercial building so there's nobody living here so when I do have my classes, I'm just like, please, nobody be here, you know? I don't really hear people in the hallway. I'm in a warehouse in Brooklyn, so um, there's tons of studios, art studios. So I'm in the creative area. If, if you ever come around this area, there's all art all around, all around the walls and just um, artists walking around, photography. There's actually a movie being filmed down the block right now. Um, so I'm in the perfect location. So if there is anybody that smells it, they're definitely cool with it. Okay. That makes total sense then. And, uh, you know, if they do start complaining, maybe they can come down and, and partake. learn from it. Yeah, partake. Exactly. <laughs> um, so let's talk about some of your events as well. Um, who attends? How are you getting the word out there? What? Tell me about the event aspect piece of, of logistically maybe. So when I started my business in 2016, I was just putting things on Instagram only, just Instagram, posting little art pieces that I would do. And some people would really like them and some people would ask me for custom pieces. So when that started, I, I, my uneducated artistic self, which was never involved in any arts at all my whole life, I was actually involved in sports and like my friends. Um, when that all happened, I was like, what do artists do? They have art shows. So let me just throw myself an art show. So I ended up renting out a spot and praying that people would show up. You know, I just told my friends and family and I luckily got like a pretty large crowd for my little art space that I got. And, um, it was, it was an amazing event. And I was just like, wow, I feel so inspired. Like my family were buying pieces of mine. I was like, wow, I have some money in my pocket. This is great. Let me just do another show. So then I kept throwing shows after that. My shows were just getting bigger and bigger. And the only way that it was all possible was Instagram and word of mouth. I was literally posting everything on Instagram. I would make myself a flyer. I would rent out a space, get a DJ, buy myself a little bar by like having my friends at a table selling drinks and stuff. Um, 
And it all stemmed from that. And then my art shows got larger where I would have small business owners or artists or artists like uh, singers or whatever come to my shows. They would have tables and they would perform. So it would be like a flea market concert, basically. Like that's what it turned into. And that was about the last seven of them that were all like that. The first, I think two were just me. And the second one was just performances. Yeah, so they were all just like that. You can go on YouTube and you can see all of my, not all of them, a couple of them. A couple of my events are on YouTube. I do forget to get a videographer because I do smoke a lot of weed. So, you know, <laughs> you forget some things. So, yeah, and then after that, I was like, I worked in a paint and sip spot in Brooklyn for two days. I went, I got hired, and then I was put onto an event. And I was like, wow, this is awesome. I can do this myself. Like, I, all I need to do is get the supplies. So I went, I bought all the supplies, and then I started promoting on Instagram. Like, hey, I'm doing paint and sips. If you like paint and sip, like, call me. And a couple of people believed in me, and they hired me to do the paint and sip, which I'm so grateful for. And I went to their houses. I did the paint and sips, and I was like, this is great. I kept doing that, and then COVID hit. So I was kind of like stagnant for a while and I was creating pieces. I actually created this the first week of COVID. Um, and then from that, I was like, I need to keep on doing the pants. They're so fun. Like people love them. So I started doing free ones on Instagram live during COVID. So that was kind of great because people were looking forward to them. They had nothing to do at home. And I was here giving them a free Bob Ross pants in class. So families were joining, friends were joining. It was so amazing. And then after that, I decided what is really stopping me from this art studio other than my own insecurities, you know? So I decided I'm just going to look for something. I didn't really have too much of a plan. I just decided I'm going to look for something. And then I found this studio. I rented it out. And now I've been doing my classes here. And the only reason this is doing as well as it is is because of TikTok. If I could tell any, if anybody could take one thing from today, it would be to put all of your stuff everywhere. Put it on TikTok, put it on Instagram, put it on Facebook, put it on Google, whatever you could do, just put it out there because somebody might take it a different way than you take it. You might think it's like not a big deal. And then somebody else is like, wow, this is the best thing ever. I want to have my birthday here, you know? So I would just say promote yourself. Don't, don't give up on yourself. Because if you don't care about yourself, nobody else will. <laughs> truth, truth there. Uh, on the Instagram note, have you got, I know in the industry, it's huge people getting just completely wiped out of Instagram. Has that happened to you at all? Uh, what do you mean? Uh, their Instagram's gotten shut down and they've lost all their followers for promoting cannabis related things, even if it wasn't even showing actual cannabis, just using the hashtag cannabis. We haven't at Trichomes, but I know others have been shut down. Well, knock on wood, God forbid. I well, Not that I, I haven't lived through that yet. Nothing has like that has happened to me. The only thing similar that happened was I had a really good video on TikTok. It was like getting a couple thousand views, which is great for me. You know, I'm not used to large numbers. I'm like very, very small local business. So um, it was doing really well. And I think in the background, somebody was smoking. So they flagged the whole video and took it down. And I was like, no, like, who knows who shared this? Like, they could have came, you know? But now I'm just kind of being a little bit more careful with what I'm posting and how I post it. I have my mom following me on Instagram. So she's been in my ear about smoking on camera for years. So luckily, I have been filtering my Instagram for a while. So now I'm going to start filtering my TikTok as well because I don't want to get flagged. I want people to come here and experience the fun, you know, because it's fun. <laughs> it is. Are you going out? Uh, are you using social media primarily as promotion? Or are you going out to local places? I feel like you're probably pretty busy that you don't actually have to do that. But correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so it's funny, actually, back when I first started, like years ago, and I was having my art shows, I would literally print out little flyers and drop them in like coffee shops and places. But I've noticed that the way that you attract people's attention is through their phone. So I could put a piece of paper in your face, and you probably wouldn't even read it. But if I sent you a screenshot, you would read it all the way through, you know, so uh, I was so much money on paper and stuff like that, that I'm like, you know what, let me stop. Let me get the freeway, go through my phone. And I've, I've seen more traffic through my phone 
than I do locally word of mouth through my friends, you know, like social media is a dangerous game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you want to stay small business? Uh, I know some people want, prefer that and other people want to keep going and going and going, but where's your stance on that in your career in cannabis? I do not want to stay a small business. I want to grow and I want to hopefully one day own something larger than life, you know, but my whole thing starting was I want my art to be like famous, not really me. I kind of want to be like this normal person still um, with a little bit of attention that I'm getting from TikTok. I get overwhelmed. So I can't even imagine what it's like for Kim Kardashian. So I can't. I can't do that, but I would definitely love to see like my art in museums one day and just be able to like stare at them the way that I stare at pieces in natural history or in the MoMA, you know, I want, right. my, I want my art to be loved by everyone the way that I love it. <laughs> <laughs> There's uh, the Museum of Weed. I don't know if you're familiar with there, but you can always reach out uh, Vegas. And then uh, there's one in L.A., I believe, as well. Wow. I might be wrong on the one in L.A., but, yeah, there's the Museum of Weed. You could get your art in there as well. Or, you know, there's 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 cannabis expos going on in every single city almost in the larger cities Uh monthly so um, some of my advice for you if you want to grow bigger and get more involved in the industry also would be to host paint and sips in those locations that these cannabis events conferences are happening because a lot of people want to do outside activities outside of the expo might be a good opportunity for you and i'm happy to to shoot you over some expos that are coming up uh, in the industry and yes thank you so much that's awesome that's a great idea Yes, I, full, full of ideas for you. So, uh, but I always want to know some people prefer to stay small businesses as well. And, but if that's not where you want to go, then there are definitely avenues we can help you grow in within the industry. So yeah. uh, one of the questions I ask everybody on the show is what would be some big sister advice you would give someone who's considering a career on in cannabis? I would say do your research first. Don't do anything that you might get in trouble depending on where you're at, but definitely do not give up on whatever you believe is your passion or your dream or what you want to do with your time. You know, Definitely keep going wherever you're at, even if you're at the bottom or below the bottom. Keep going because there's only up. <laughs> Literally, like, if I would have been discouraged, I wouldn't have done any of this and I would have been miserable. So don't be like what I could have been. You know, be happy <laughs> and unique. I, your approach just is so unique to getting into the to having a career in cannabis. So that that's what drew me to want to interview you is because I wanted to know where this all came about. And I don't think I think people think, oh, to have a career in cannabis, that means you are working for a company and, or, you know, being involved, touching the plant, trimming. Some people don't think outside the box about how to get into the industry. So appreciate you thinking outside the box, which most artists do. So <laughs> um, how, what is your, what are your social handles? How can, how can you be reached? So I am a one art underscore on Instagram and on Twitter and on TikTok. So you can follow me there. And then I also have a website, www.sabrinapalacio.com. Um, you can find that on my Instagram in the bio and yeah. I'm A1R everywhere. <laughs> Can you spell your last name? P A L A C I O. Awesome. That cuz I know that'll be the next question. <laughs> is how to spell your last name. Well, is there anything this has been a great conversation getting to know you. Is there anything you'd like to leave off for our listeners? I would say please believe in yourself. Seriously, because if you don't, nobody else will. If I didn't believe in myself, I would not be here. And that would have made or break my whole life you know so believe in yourself and just don't stop wherever you're at keep going don't give up awesome awesome advice well thank you so much sabrina of a1 art studio for your time today i wish you the best of luck in all you do and continuing to smoke cannabis spreading education through your art uh, and just keep up the good work so thank, thank you. you so much sabrina thank bye you. bye Hey, thanks for watching our channel. Click here to watch another episode of Careers in Cannabis and more great shows and interviews. To find more cannabis industry reporting, insider stories, and to stay up to date on the latest trends, make sure you subscribe and keep up to date with the Tricomes community app. Download it now and we'll see you there.